After you've completed repairs or replacing parts in your Beretta 80 series pistol, you'll need to put it back together. In this video, I'll show you how I put the Beretta 80 series pistols back together. Now the first step to putting the Beretta 80 series pistol back together is the magazine release. To put this magazine catch back in, we're gonna need four parts. We're gonna need the magazine catch spring plunger, the magazine catch spring, the magazine catch, and the magazine catch roll pin. Our first step is to put the magazine catch spring onto the magazine catch plunger. And to do that, we just simply put the spring onto the back side of the plunger. Now it really doesn't matter what side of the spring goes on first. Now we're gonna put the magazine catch into the frame. And we're gonna do that by taking this wing and putting it into the hole and then rotating around. Now I'm gonna let the magazine catch fall a little bit, and then I'm gonna push my thumb down onto it, so that way I can get access to the hole there. This is where we're gonna put the spring and the plunger in. And we'll insert the plunger assembly spring side first into the hole, just like that. Now we're gonna get the back side of that plunger into the hole. And to do this, we'll rotate this back around and then just stick it into the hole there. This next part is going to be really hard to see, but you are going to need a 1 16th inch punch. Now you can see this hole right here in the magwell. And as I push the magazine release in, the hole becomes unobstructed. And I'm going to drop a 1 16th inch punch right in there. To get this roll pin in, I'm going to use a roll pin holder punch. And I'm going to put my roll pin in there. And then let's turn this frame upside down. So I push my punch through, and then I'm slowly going to replace my punch. Now I'm going to use a 1 16th inch roll pin starter punch to finish the install of this roll pin. Now once that's just below the surface, the roll pin's installed. Now finally, I'm going to test to make sure that everything moves free and is not binding. With that, the magazine catch is installed. This is the hardest part of the install. We have to get seven parts into the frame and we have to temporarily install them with a 1 16th inch punch and a 5 32nds inch punch. For this step, we're going to need the ejector, the hammer stop, the decock hammer spring, the firing pin catch lever, the firing pin catch lever spring, and the front and the rear pins. Now the rear pin is the roll pin, whereas the front pin is a straight pin. Now our first step is to install the ejector. Now the blade of the ejector is going to be on the left hand side of the frame. Now these can be a little tight to get in there, but they will fit. Now we're going to take our 1 16th inch punch and we're going to put it through the front hole of the ejector going from left to right. Now for this next step, we're going to need our hammer stop and our hammer decock spring. Now I'm going to put the hammer decock spring onto the hammer stop. But before I'm going to do that, I'm going to just put a little bit of white lithium grease on there. This will help hold the spring as I'm installing the hammer stop. As you can see, I put the leg of the spring into the small hole in the hammer stop, and then the coil of the spring is lined up on the end. So now we're going to move the punch a little bit and then install this onto the punch. Now we can install the firing pin catch lever spring onto our punch. Now to do this, we'll have the long leg facing up and we'll slowly move our punch and then install that spring. Now we need to install our firing pin catch lever onto our 5 seconds inch punch, but there's a couple of things we need to do first. The first thing we need to do is rotate the ejector up and then make sure that hammer catch 
swings back around. So now we can take our 5 32 inch punch and on the right hand side of the frame insert it in to where the hammer pin will go. Now we're going to install this with the bill facing forward and you can see that tab is going to face to the left hand side of the frame. So we're going to move our punch back and we're going to install this onto our punch. And then we're going to rotate it forward. And then make sure that this is on the right hand side of the frame. So this bill is basically resting on your punch. Now we can rotate our ejector back. And what you'll see is we have that long leg of the spring sitting up there. Now we just need to maneuver that spring around that tab so it's on the back side of it. Now we just need to move that spring around the back side of that tab. And with that, we have everything temporarily installed into the frame. Now it's time to install the pins. I'm going to use a 1 inch holder punch and I'm going to put my roll pin into that and I'm going to put this rear pin in. as far as it'll go. Now I'm gonna use a 1 16th inch roll pin punch. And I'm gonna finish the install of this pin. Now that pin is fully installed when it's just below the surface on both sides. Now it's time to install the front pin. Now remember, the front pin is the straight pin, not the roll pin. And I'm gonna put that into my holder punch and then I'm going to slowly replace this front punch holding everything together. Now I'm going to switch to a 1 16th inch punch. I'm going to finish the install of this pin. And just like the other one, it's going to go just below the surface. Now that our ejector is installed, we're going to install our hammer. And for this step, we're going to need our hammer and our hammer pin. Now you're going to install the hammer onto the 5 32 inch punch, but sometimes you pull that out a little too far and the firing pin catch lever comes out. When that happens, you're going to remove the rear pin. You're going to position the firing pin catch lever inside the frame here. And then now we'll try to line all the holes. And you'll probably only get the hammer aligned first and that'll stop because this is not quite aligned in the back. And then once you have everything aligned, give that a little tap and the hammering pin will go in. Now we'll rotate down on the ejector and we're going to put that pin back in. and make sure that it's flush on both sides. Now, if you did have to reinstall the firing pin catch lever, don't forget to move the long leg of that spring back. Now it's time to put the sear in. And for this step, we're gonna need the sear, the sear pin, the sear spring, and the sear spring pin. Now, since this is a Bread 85, we don't have a sear spring pin Instead, we have the magazine disconnect pin, which will take its place. Now our first step is to place the sear into the frame. And I'm gonna temporarily hold it in place with a 3 seconds inch punch. For this, I'm actually gonna come in upside down and then install the sear onto my punch. Like that. So from here, I can then flip the sear around. Now I'm going to install the long leg of the spring down the back side of the sear and that loop is going to go onto my punch. Now 
Now that the spring is installed onto the punch, I'm going to use a 3 32 inch holder punch to install my sear pin. Now we're just going to replace the punch with the pin. And that pin is installed when it's just below the surface on both sides. Now it's time to install the sear spring pin. I'm going to need a 1 16th inch punch and a pick. With that spring laying down the sear, I'm going to take my punch and just put it in this hole a little bit. And then I'm going to take my pick and go up through the main spring housing. And I'm going to hook that spring. Now, this is much easier to do when you're not trying to show it on camera. But I'm going to pick that spring up and then install it onto my punch. Now that I have that spring onto my punch, if I'm running a Beretta 84, I can install the pin. However, since this is Beretta 85, we're going to hold off on installing that magazine disconnect pin until a little bit later. Now it's time to put the hammer spring in. For this step, we're going to need the hammer spring, the hammer spring guide, the hammer spring cap, and the hammer spring cap pin. Now our first step here is to put the hammer spring onto the hammer spring guide, and it's not going to matter which side goes in first. I'm then going to use a 5 32 inch punch, and I'm going to put it in to the bottom of the spring. Now the trick of this next step is get this little ball end into this little slot in the back of the hammer. Now that I have the hammer spring onto my punch, I'm going to put a little bit of white lithium grease right in here just to hold everything together as I'm putting that up into the hammer spring hole in the bottom of the frame. Now since I'm using a spray on white lithium grease, I'm going to need to let this sit just for a little bit so everything can stiffen up. Now that, that grease has dried just a little bit, we're going to insert this up into the hammer spring hole and into that slot on the back of the hammer. Now with bending that facing towards the rear, I'm going to insert this up into that hole. You can see right there is that head. And now it just insert, inserted into the bottom of the hammer. And you can see right there is how it works. So I pull my punch out. The spring's going to try to come with it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cock the hammer. And I'll pick this up off my bench block. And I'll put my finger here and start to pull the spring out. I'm going to just pull it off my punch. It'll fall right back down onto the hammer guide. So now we're going to install the hammer spring cap. And as you can see, it's angled. So we're going to match that angle up with the bottom of the frame. Just like that. So when we compress this, it'll match up with the bottom. But since we cocked that hammer, the sear is holding it back. So we're going to need to trip that sear. So on this side of the frame, we're going to stick a little screwdriver in here, pull that sear back, and push that hammer up. Now you can see that that plug goes a little farther up. Even though the pin is a 1 8 inch pin, I'm going to use a 3 32 inch punch to temporarily install the cap into the frame. And what I'm going to do is push that down. I'm going to put my punch in there. Now the reason why I'm using a 3 32 inch punch is I need to get that hole aligned and sometimes it's twisted around and that punch will be able to get in there and move that around. Now that I have that temporarily installed onto a 3 32 inch punch, I'm going to install the roll pin. And to do that, I'm going to use a 1 8 inch roll pin holder punch. Now with that punch only being partially installed, I'm going to twist it to make sure the holes are aligned and then start the install of my roll pin. 
Now, if I do this right, that cap will hold in place. And now I can hammer this into place. And as you can see, that cap is now being held in place. We'll just use a roll pin punch to finish the install. And for this, I'm going to use a one eighth inch roll pin punch to finish that install. Now we're going to start the install of the trigger spring. For this step, we're going to need the trigger, the trigger spring, and the takedown button. Now for this step, I'm going to use a 3 32nd inch punch and a very heavily modified screwdriver that I made. Now my first step is to insert the trigger into the frame here, and I'm going to align that bottom hole of the trigger with the hole in the frame, and I'm going to take my 3 32nd inch punch and I'm going to put it right through to temporarily hold that in place. We're going to install the disassembly button into the frame, and you can see there's that cutout there, and then there's also a hole that goes all the way through. What we're going to do is install this on the right hand side of the frame with the cutout facing up. And you'll see there the hole is facing up as well. Now this trigger spring is the hardest part about doing the reassembly of this gun. So on the spring you'll have a hook and a long leg. The hook is going to go like this. This loop is going to go onto this punch. And this long leg here is going to go into that hole of the disassembly button. Now it's going to take a little bit to get this in here and not block the camera at the same time. So right there, I've got that into the hole of the button and I'll lay that down. Now, obviously the spring is in the wrong position. So we're going to need to maneuver this around really carefully here. And I'm trying to get this small loop here, just like that in the frame. So now we just need to guide this spring into the trigger. And you can see it is not an easy thing to do. So now that I get that in the groove, I'm going to pull my punch out a little bit. And I'm going to push my spring down and then capture it with my punch. We're now going to replace that punch with the slide catch. And for this step, we're going to need the slide catch and the slide catch spring. Now you'll notice the slide catch spring has a long leg and a short leg. And we're actually going to install it just like this, where the long leg is facing out and the short leg's facing down. And then we're going to rotate it around because that spring is going to go into a notch right there. Now the tricky part is, is getting the slide catch in to replace the punch and compressing this small leg into the frame. And what I'm going to do here is slowly replace my punch with a slide catch. You'll notice I have the slide catch facing down, and there's a reason. And I'll show you in a second here. Just making sure I don't lose my spring there. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to make sure that we're in the groove here. Now we're going to have to make sure we don't scratch the frame when we're bringing this up. But 
we're going to take this short leg and kind of just stick it in there without having the long leg come out of that groove. And I'm going to compress that spring and come up and slide it in. Now we're going to install the trigger bar. And for this step, we're going to need the trigger bar and the trigger bar spring. Now, if you have a Beretta 85, we're also going to need the magazine safety, magazine safety spring, and magazine safety pin. Now on the trigger bar, we have a round peg and a square peg. The round peg is going to go into the top hole of the trigger. Now we're going to rotate this around and you're going to see this hole where this dog leg of the spring is going to go in. And then this slot is where this little hump is going to go into for the spring. Now one of the problems we're going to have is you can see the trigger spring right here is blocking that hole. We're going to have to pull that spring out so we can get that round peg in. Now the square peg is basically going to sit right back in here in that slot. This is where this custom screwdriver that I made is going to come in handy. I'm going to squeeze the trigger and you can see there's right there that spring just sits up a little bit. And if I go to the side, you can see that I can hook that spring and pull it out of the way. So I'm going to start the install of the trigger bar. But one thing to look for is you can see this little hump here on the spring is going to ride right into that groove right on the frame. Now I'm going to work upside down here because the spring will fall out. And I'm going to put the pin into that top hole of the trigger. Now it's not going to go all the way in because of that spring. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this spring and I'm just going to guide it into that slot like that. Now to get this trigger bar in all the way, I'm going to use this custom screwdriver that I made and I'm going to hook that spring and pull it forward and slide that trigger bar in and then let go. So now that trigger bar is in, we can put the magazine disconnect safety in because this is a Beretta 85. If you had a Beretta 84, you would have put this pin in back when we did the sear spring. But since this is an 85, we're going to lay down this magazine disconnect. And you're going to see right there is where it catches the trigger bar. And then we're going to replace our punch with this pin. Now it makes it a little easier if you can get into this sear spring with a screwdriver and pull up I'm going to pull my punch out and I'm going to slide that pin in place. So there is the magazine disconnect. So now we're going to take the spring and the spring is going to go in like this and this leg is bent just a little bit so it can go in the notch right there. And we're going to slide this under. And then bend that spring up and go into the notch. Now we're going to install the safety. For this step, we're going to need the trigger release lever, the right safety, the right safety pin, the left safety, the safety spring, and the safety plunger. Now in the front of this left safety is this hole and we're going to drop our spring into that hole. Now we're going to take that pin on that plunger and just insert it onto the spring. And for this next step, you're going to need to make sure that the hammer is cocked or else the safety is not going to go into the frame. And we're going to be careful because that plunger is just sitting on there and we're going to insert 
this into the frame like that. Now I'm going to use a 1 16th inch holder punch to push that plunger in. Now what we need to do is get this plunger behind the hammer pin. And I'm just going to use this holder punch to compress the plunger like that and then push that down. So now you can see that that plunger is on the other side of that hammer pin. Now we're completely done the left hand side of the safety and we're going to work on the right hand side. Now before we put that right safety wing on, we're going to put the trigger release lever in like that and we're just going to rotate it around. Now I'm going to put this right wing on and I'm going to need to use a highly sophisticated paper clip to align these holes. I'm going to put that wing on there just like that. And I want to come in from the bottom here with my paper clip and align my holes. Now from here, I'm going to use a 1 16th inch roll pin holder punch to put the pin in. And I'm just going to slowly replace my paper clip with this pin. Now I'm going to finish the install with the 1 16th inch roll pin starter punch. I'm going to make sure that pin is just below the surface on both sides. Now from here, we should be able to decock the hammer with the safety. Now with the safety off, it won't fire because this is a Beretta 85. So we'll need to make sure that we push up on that disconnect safety. And you can see the hammer is going to cock. Now let's just double check. Let's turn the safety on. And yes, the safety works. The only thing that we have left to put in is the disassembly latch and our grip panels. For this step, we're going to need our disassembly latch, our left and right grip panels, our grip screw lock washer, we'll need four of those, and our grip screws, and we're going to need four of those. So let's start with our disassembly latch. We're just going to slide it into the hole here and just rotate it around. And as you can see, it just kind of falls into place. Now we can push that button in and rotate it down. So that way we're ready to put our slide on. Now let's install our grips. Now we can just put our grip panel on here. And if the grip screw lock washers came out, we'll just need to put them into the holes here. And then with a screwdriver, we just install our screws. Now it's going to be really tempting to get these screws so that way they kind of line up with the grips. Don't do that. Over tightening these screws can cause damage to the grips themselves. So tighten them just enough to be snug, but no more. Then obviously we'll complete the same process on the other side. The frame is now reassembled. The only thing you have to do now is put the slide on, do some function testing, and make sure that the gun fires safely. Thank you for watching. Hope you're staying safe out there, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.